2.3. I'm Jose Salinas, your host. Latin music, Latin movies. You can't get away from the Hispanic influence and culture in this country. It's touching everything, everywhere. And the census report has told us that it's only going to grow. There's a famous, famous, famous Latina who I had the honor of meeting back in the 90s when I was at Power 106. She and I had several conversations, and we were actually in a magazine together. Her name was Selena, and she was taken from us far, far, far too soon. What an amazing talent. I remember the first time I got to play her song on Power 106, you know, Dreaming of You, and it was just, it's just such an amazing talent. So I'm always looking for amazing Latinas to promote. And I've got one sitting here with me right now, Latin recording artist Tachita is in the house going to talk with us about what she's got going on, where she's going, and what she hopes to bring to the airwaves. Good morning. So much going on. Let's talk about <sighs> the Selena conne connection right now. Well, um, I was given the honor actually about, uh, it was about three months ago, I received a, uh, a telephone uh, call from a gentleman by the name of Christopher Troy. Christopher Troy apparently back in 1995 was uh, touring uh, with the Johnny Canales show. Uh, he is a promoter along with Mr. Zach Harmon. They are producers with, they were with Michael Jackson, uh, ATV and Publishing at the time. They were asked uh, at the request of Selena's uh, family, her father, her brother, herself. They wanted, uh, they were going to complete the rest of her English pop Right. Crossover yeah, because she was right in the middle of yeah, doing she, that big crossover. Exactly. She had only completed, about, I believe, four songs, and then she was supposed to complete the rest. At that time, there was a lot of R&B producers, and I don't know if everybody wanted, knew at that time, that didn't want to get into the Latin music, per se. So uh, uh, Mr. Christopher Troy and Zach Harmon agreed to go ahead and do that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, at the family's request, when they came back, and they composed the music for Selena uh, in the format of for Selena. They received uh, a phone call before media broke that she had been shot. Um, they didn't know what to do. So um, she never got to hear it. She ne never even got to grace her voice on it, but it was her music. Mm -hmm. It has been sitting there, Josefa, for the last 16 years in his studio mm -hmm. and he called me and asked me I'd like for you to do that music will you do it and put can you put her her, her uh, spirit in it if you wanna and you know he said if you want to we can just we can just have you do it you know mm -hmm. considering that I just came out of an album with one of the Commodores and uh, Jesse Johnson at the time and I'm the spirit of Selena I think it's something that maybe she would have wanted and uh, just to show my gratitude to the family I'm going to be giving 30% of all my CD sales that generate from that music, her lost music, to the Selena Foundation. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So now you've had a chance to hear the music. You've had a chance to see the, um, the lyrics, the lyrics are all written. But again, it was formatted for Selena, so they couldn't give it over to another uh, R&B, right. uh, uh, you know, um, artist. artist. Uh -huh. Uh, so it was just sitting there. They didn't know what to do with it, right? And they were just gonna. I, well, he said he didn't know what to do with it. So until he met me and saw me, and there was a lot of things that tra has transpired in my life that has led me to believe that this is what I'm supposed to record. Before I even um, accepted Mr. Christopher Troy's offer, I called uh, her family. Go to the source. So uh, her brother, A.B., said he remembered Mr. Troy. So um, I picked up the phone and I talked to her dad. So I spoke to her dad and I pretty much asked him for their blessing. I wanted their blessing. Right. So uh, quoting his words, he said, you know, young lady, if, uh, if this is all true and then the music is going to be yours, uh, I would run with it. You know, uh, but, you know, I, I do want to put it for the record that she didn't, she was never able to get to hear it. She was never able to grace her voice on it, but it was for her, right? It was, it was for, right. it was for her. Complete her album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she was going to do it in English, 
for the English market, mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm not going to do it in English. I'm going to give it back to the Latin community, and I'm going to go ahead and do it in all Spanish. Oh, well, go, oh, come on, do at least an English version of it, because that was one of the beauties of Selena. She opened the door for Latin music and the people to hear Latin artists, but appreciate it in English, mm -hmm. and then she also, because a lot of her shows were English and Spanish, at least consider yeah. it, please, because there's such an audience out there that wants to hear, but if they don't understand Spanish, it kind of stops them from enjoying You know, you have a point there. Okay, just you for know? you, I will. <laughs> Just for you, know, you. <laughs> consider it because now you're opening up the door. Yes, we have a, a huge Spanish-speaking audience that will love this music and just be so happy. But there's also a huge English-speaking audience that will love this music and support it. Yeah. But it's difficult to support something if you don't understand the word. And you're right because that's one of the reasons she wanted to do the English crossover is yeah. because um, she wanted a lot of her fans to understand, you know, what she was saying. Uh, I just want to make sure because, you know, I know that now that I'm going to be doing that music that was, and I always want to say, the music that was slated for Selena, mm -hmm. I always want to make sure everybody realizes that I'm not taking something that she did and trying to be like her. Right. I'm not trying to replace her. I'm trying just to honor, honor, honor what would have been hers. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm trying to do. And I, I could have just did it and, 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 and whatever comes may it so they may like me maybe not like me right mm -hmm. but it's something that I feel that I have to do in my heart mm -hmm. and I, I truly believe it's something because the things that have been having Josefa in the last four years when I got interviewed on uh, on my album this last al album Abrazame when the man that interviewed me when I found out that the last person he interviewed was Selena before she passed away and that was Mr. Pete Moraga and he agreed to interview me right and then shortly after that I found myself at the Latin Grammys with her brother and then I found myself as, at also at his CD release party maybe there's something you're supposed to do something you know because I'm a very spiritual person and then all of a sudden I get this phone call and I'm like, you know what? All of that led you to the phone call. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm so happy because I remember when she was, you know, preparing to do the crossover, which meant she was going to do an album in English mm -hmm. because she knew her fan base had grown so much. I mean, those songs were like the hottest requested songs on the Slow Jam show with Selena. And she knew that she had a market in the English audience, which is why I, you know, said so strongly, please consider yeah. doing the, uh, the album in English and in Spanish because that's the way it would have been done. And if it's going to be done in the spirit of her, then let's honor that final spirit and where that spirit was. And um, I, I'm not embarrassed of my age. I am, I am six years older than Selena would have been today. And listen to this music. And let it just speak to me right and uh, again I'm going to do everything I possibly can to uh, to give the fans back something that she could have given back because I honestly feel it was hers mm -hmm. you know even though she never got to hear it or get to sing to it Good. it was something that she requested well there was a reason why it was put in your lap mm -hmm. and I've heard you sing ah. so I know that you are going to be able to rock the music and I cannot wait. I hope if you are you gonna record here in LA? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Oh well let me know when you do because I would love to come to the studio and excited because I, I kind of feel like I'm a part of it in some way because yeah, you are. she and I <laughs> she and I were um yeah you know, I'm not gonna say we were friends, but we knew each other and we were in a couple of magazines. She was on one side, I was on the other, you know, on the same issue and so and it was at a very important and special time in my life when I met her and I'm so proud now to be here and be a part of this, to still be in radio all these years later, and now to come across this project and to know that I'm going to be there while it's being done. And remember, her Spanish was not so good. She had to learn some Spanish in order to do a lot of her songs. So you're actually, you know, we're honoring a big thing here. Well, you're looking at the same person. Mm -hmm. I've, I had to learn Spanish also. I am a Chicana, just like she was. I was born, I was, I was raised exactly the same way. <laughs> I I remember when I saw the movie of uh, Selena and I said to myself, that's exactly me. I create my own clothing line. 
I started when I was 14 years old, and I've been singing since I was a Latina. That's, I, I realized that when I sang in Spanish, so I taught myself how to sing in Spanish, and sometimes I didn't know some of the words I was singing right, but my grandparents always told me, si me quieres hablar en español, si me quieres hablar, háblame en español, porque si no, no me vas a hablar. And I, since the early, and, and for those who don't, didn't understand that, my grandparents used to say, you're going to talk to me. <laughs> you're going to talk to me. Talk to me in Spanish, mm -hmm. or don't even talk to me at all. And believe me, if I wanted something from my grandparents, I needed to talk to them in Spanish. <laughs> As I'm creating and I'm writing uh, the music, I call my mother. I call my girlfriend, which is Puerto Rican. I call another girlfriend, which is uh, Cuban. And I ask them, okay how does this song sound the way I just wrote it, you know? Mm -hmm. Because, again, I get a little, little twisted, too. I know how to read and write, speak Spanish, because I literally, I, you know, you have to teach yourself. You have oh, to yeah. just, these are things that us as Latinas have to learn. Well, you know, and uh, there's a lot of us out there, because I'm throwing myself right there in that group. My father came from Mexico, and um, he wanted us to speak English properly, because he saw the um, discrimination that was put yeah. upon him because he can't say children or church. He says children and church to this day and he is an English literature professor. Yeah. But he still has that, that problem and he so we were we didn't we weren't taught. I knew Spanish as a child, then didn't speak it for a long time and then had to re reteach it to myself by becoming, you know, speaking it more with people. And that happened to a lot of people. But it doesn't make you any less Latino. Nope. Because you don't speak it fluently. I can read it. My mother is uh uh, Spaniard, Italian, and Irish, mm -hmm. my mother, and my father is uh, Mexican and, and Spanish, and so, again, it was on my father's side right. of the family, mm -hmm. and then uh, my mother's mother spoke, mm -hmm. just pure Spanish, so, um, but all my aunts, my tias, mm -hmm. we all spoke English, and, you know, uh, one house was Soul Train, the other one was American Bandstand. <laughs> <laughs> and, you and you know, I even, I think, and people say, what is your favorite music? What do you like to listen to the most of all? You know, no one could, I had a contest, anybody that, that guesses what I like, it's free CD. No one even guessed. I love classic rock. That's wow. what, I love classic rock. I love Journey, I love Bon Jovi, Kansas, you know, Hall and Oates. I, I love, I love it, you know, mm -hmm. they have the, the words. Well, I mean, rock and roll is the heart of music. Exactly, yeah. I love, I love it. But when I sing Spanish, it's where it's where my heart comes out. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know. So I'm really, I'm really happy to be doing that. Very good. So give us a little taste of something. Your favorite song, acapella, right now. Besame mucho. Okay, just a little bit. Go ahead. Besame. Bésame mucho, como si fuera esta noche la última vez. Bésame, bésame mucho, que tengo miedo perderte, perderte después. Nice! <laughs> I cannot wait until you start working on this project in honor of Selena. Yes. And as often as you can come back and let us know what's going on, please come back and see us. We'll be with you every step of the way. And when it comes out, it will be my pleasure to help you let the world know that this is being done in